Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to read through the chapter 31 story from the AK textbook. So like I was telling these videos before we do anything um, in terms of translating and reading, you want to make sure that you have the vocab under control because it's really hard to understand the story if you don't know what the words mean. So practice the vocab, study it, make sure you feel like you're in a pretty good place. Um, look at the English derivatives if that helps. Just anything you can do to make sure that you feel like you have the vocab um, under control and in a good place. That way you can recognize the words as you read through the story. Then you want to transition over to the grammar. So this chapter has a couple pieces of grammar. You have passive infinitives, which aren't too bad to really, um, you know, make some sense of and, and use. And then you have a couple more demonstratives, which also aren't bad. Once you know what they mean, um, you'll be fine every time you see them. It's just more that there's a pretty big chart involved. But again, we're going to go through it together now. And, and like I said, you're better off practicing than kind of memorizing the chart. Read through. And the more you read and practice these, the better off you're going to be. The last thing you want to do before you start diving too far into this is read the story aloud, right? Find a partner, read it aloud to them so you can work on your pronunciation, then have them read the story back to you. That way you get your listening skills involved too. It all is helpful for, for reading comprehension and just making sure that you're understanding the story. Even if you're not directly translating it, you'd be surprised how, how much better you become at hearing the patterns and kind of hearing how these, these sentences all flow together in the new grammar. It'll help you out um, when it comes time to straight up translating it. So once you have that under control, um, you'll be ready to dive into the story. But first, let's just do a quick review of the grammar to make sure that you're good. And I'll try to point these out in the story as we go so that you can translate it. The first thing you're going to learn is about infinitives, right? Passive infinitives. So you want to remember the infinitive is the general form of the verb. There's no person attached to it. So instead of saying I'm walking or you walk, you just say to walk. Right? It just means in general, the, the idea of walking, right? Infinitives in Latin end in RE, and we translate them as to do something. We've used them as complementary infinitives, you know, saying I want to run, right? So you use the infinitive to, to complete uh, the meaning of another verb. In this case, you know, if you say I want, someone's not sure what you want. If you say to run, it, it kind of completes the meaning. Now people understand that you want to do something. We've also used them for finding the present stem, right, of verbs, uh, which is where we start for present, imperfect, future tense, right? You go to the second principal part, the infinitive, and you drop the RE. So it's been useful for a bunch of different things. It's also where we have the imperative, right, is related to the infinitive. So you've seen it a lot. But everything you've seen so far have been active infinitives, right? Present active infinitives. And we'll deal with the tenses later. Don't worry about the present part. Just think about the active part. Now that we're diving into passive voice, you're ready to learn about present passive infinitives, right? And the idea is very similar. It's the same idea um, of a general form of a verb, but you're just using passive voice. So instead of saying to walk, you're saying to be walked, right? That's the kind of general way you translate a passive um, voice infinitive is to be something, right? So to be walked walked, to be seen, to be heard, right? I want to be heard or I, I need to be seen, whatever you're trying to say. It's to be, that's the part that makes it passive. So it's functioning the same way as an infinitive. It just has passive voice. So how do we do this in Latin? Well, to form this present passive infinitive, you basically just change the ending. So instead of an RE, you change it to an RI. So instead of ambulare, to walk, you make it ambulari, to be walked. Right. The only tricky part is when you have third conjugation verbs. That's where you replace the entire ERE with a long I. So instead of mitere to send, you say miti to be sent. Right. So it looks a little different. But in general, that long I is the passive ending for the infinitive. Right. So ambulari, miti, whatever you're trying to say. So you just want to memorize this one you know, pretty straightforward rule and you'll be fine. You'll probably recognize the infinitive right away um, and just realize that it has a slightly different ending. Those third conjugation ones might take a little bit of practice, but again, read through it. The more you read and see these, the better off you're going to be. The other part of the grammar um, are two new demonstratives, right? Remember, a demonstrative is a pointing or a showing word, right? You learn the ones this and that, hic and ille. So you're pointing something out, right? It comes from demonstrare, to point or to show in Latin. So the two new ones you're learning in this chapter are ipse, ipsa, ipsum, which means himself, herself, itself, and idem, eadem, idem, which means the same. So ipse is an intensive word, meaning it, it adds emphasis, right? So you'd use this, uh, use this if you're saying something like, I myself did this, or, you know, she herself did this. Um, so that's really when you'd see it. But again, it's an adjective, so you're describing something. So that's what we have for the note on the bottom. Both of these are going to have case, number, and gender. Ida means the same. So again, it's a similar idea, but you might say something like, oh, I saw the same person in the street, or I went down the same road. That's what you're doing with these. They're, they're, they're two demonstratives. They mean things, uh, sorry, their meaning is pretty straightforward to understand. It's really just more recognizing them um, as you go, and that comes through practice.
And like I said, just to repeat that note in the bottom, these have to match with case number and gender of the noun they're modifying, right? So they're going to be describing nouns. You need the case number and gender, which is why we have this for the chart. And again, you can memorize the chart. Um, you'll notice a couple patterns if you, if you feel like memorizing it. Um, the endings are, are you know, the same as noun endings, basically. So if you look on the masculine column, particularly in the plural, you're going to see that, you know, ipse ends in e, orum, is, os, is, when it's masculine, i, orum, is, os, is, when feminine, and a, orum, is, a, is, when neuter. These are the noun endings, first and second declension noun endings that you've been recognizing. There's some tricks um, in this, uh, the singular, right? <clears throat> so it's going to look a little bit different from what you've seen. But in general, it's, it's mimicking noun endings. So it should be pretty straightforward to learn. Um, again, you can learn these, uh, you know, and, and try to memorize it. I think it's better to do it through practice. And the more you practice, you're going to recognize these sort of in the context of stories. I think that's an easier way to do it. But either way, if you need it, this is what they look like. Um, and again, this is where we, we talk about case number and gender. You have to match it to the noun they're describing. So if you're saying, you know, she herself, you're going to be using the feminine column. Um, or if you're saying, I went, I saw the same man, right, for idem, it would be the masculine column. And you just have to think about that as you go. So again, feel free to, to memorize this as much as you want, um, but I think probably better off doing it in context. But either way, make sure you feel good about the grammar and you'll be ready to translate the story, which is where we're going to head now. So the story starts with quinta ora est, right? It was the fifth hour or it is the fifth hour. And again, you want to remember that when we talk about timing and hours in, in Latin, we're not saying it's five o'clock. It's really saying it's the fifth hour after sunrise. So it would probably be somewhere around, I don't know, call it 11 o'clock maybe. Um, if you're figuring the sun comes up around six, give or take, it kind of depends on the time of year. But it's saying the fifth hour after the sun rose, right? So it's fairly early in the day. And remember, this is after our story um, where, you know, Cornelia and, and her mom Aurelia had gone out. They would seen the fire. There's a reference in one of those uh, past chapters where they say, um, Aurelia says, I already sent a slave to buy a pig. That's what this chapter is about. It's picking up on that idea of they're still getting ready for the dinner party, but what was happening when Cornelia and Aurelia were gone. So it says, it's the fifth hour. Marcus et sexus per atrium ambulant, cum subito e culina cacinus maximus auditor. So Marcus and sexus, there's our subject, they're walking, right, ambulant per atrium through the atrium. So they're walking through the atrium when, cum, suddenly, subito, auditor, right? Something is heard. It's not saying they hear, it's auditor. Something is heard or is being heard. It's a passive voice verb. You can tell by the T-U-R ending. So the subject here is cockiness maximus, um, a really loud laughter, the greatest laughter you can almost say, um, is heard, meaning they heard a lot of laughter. And it's a culina, out of the kitchen. So out of the kitchen, you know, very loud uh, laughter is heard. Statum in culinam pueri intrant ubi sirem et alio servos widen. So statum immediately, the pueri, the boys, intrant, they enter in culinam into the kitchen. And again, it's accusative because it's motion into. So immediately they go into the kitchen, you can almost say, they enter into the kitchen. Where ubi, widen, they see. Who do they see? We need direct objects. They see Cyrus and the other slaves. So basically the idea is they're walking through the atrium, they hear a noise, they go check it out because it's in the kitchen and they see the slaves there. Sextus, cur vos omnes ridetis, inquit, iocumne auduistis. So Sextus asked them something, right? Inquit, he says or asks. And he says, cur, why? Why are you all, vos omnes is your subject, why are you all laughing? Ridetis, right? Why are you laughing? And he says, auduistis, did you hear? Remember, this is perfect tense. You can tell by the V. The istis ending is second person plural because he's talking to a group of people. He says, did you hear a yokum, a joke? The N-E means you're asking a yes or no question, basically, right? It's that enclitic stuck onto the, the word here. Um, in this case, the noun yokum. So he says, did you hear a joke? Did you all hear a joke? Then we have cui Cyrus, yoko optimo delectamor domine. Right. So Cyrus, cui to whom? It's saying to whom Cyrus kind of responds or says you can imply. So Cyrus says, um, delectamor, we are delighted. Right. We're being delighted, meaning we're laughing is kind of the idea. And you have um, the ablative here uh, because it's a passive voice. You need that ablative of agent. What's making them laugh? And again, since it's a thing and not a person, we're not using the preposition a or ab. So he's saying we are delighted by the best joke, yoko optimo, right? By the best joke, domine is vocative because he's talking to Sextus. He calls him master. So he says we're being delighted by the best joke, master, right? We heard a good joke. 
Then he continues and he says, est in culina servus quidam, cui nomen est So he says, there is est in culina in the kitchen. And again, it's ablative because there's no motion involved, just inside the kitchen. There is in the kitchen a certain slave, servus quidam. Remember the quidam is that indefinite adjective. You can tell by the D-A-M ending. So it looks like a relative pronoun, but the D-A-M gives it away. It means a certain or some. So he says, there is in the kitchen some slave right? For whom the name, or whose name you could say, quinomen, whose name is Pseudolus, right? So there's a new slave that we're introduced to, Pseudolus. Non servus said mercator esse videtur. So he says, um, not a slave, but a merchant, we dator. We dator means he seems, or he, it almost means he appears, but seems is probably a good translation. He seems to be, esse, right? So he says, he seems to be not a slave, but a merchant, Right? So he's making a comment on this slave saying he's more like a merchant than a slave. And he's going to explain what he means. He says, Heri mane in urbem ad tabernam lanii descendit, nam carnem emere wolebat. So yesterday, Heri, early in the morning, it's our, our timing word, right? So early in the morning, he descended, right? Descended. He went down. Where, um, and again, remember, they're, they're talking about the hills of Rome. So if you live up on one of the hills, you go down into the valley, um, which is where the market is in this place, uh, in this case, rather. So he says, he went down in Urbem into the city. Where did he go? Ad to Bernam Lani, to the shop of a butcher, right? Alanius is a butcher, so Lani is genitive. It's, it's the shop of the butcher. Um, why did he do this? Nam, because, or for, you could say. Well, Labot, he wanted, he was wanting, or you could say he wanted Emre to buy. It's a complementary infinitive. He wanted to buy Carnem, me, right? It's not so much that he wanted to do it himself. Pseudolus is the slave that Aurelia, the mom, had already sent out to buy the, the pig, basically the meat, right? So he's been ordered to go here. He's not just doing it of his own volition, right? He had to go. So he's going to buy Carnem. He's going to buy meat. Uh, meat. And Pseudolus inquit, quanti, right? Quanti inquit Pseudolus, est illa perna. So Pseudolus says or asks to the merchant is the idea, how much, quanti, how much is that ham? Illa is our demonstrative, um, our pointing word for something that's kind of far away from you, right? So he's pointing to something a little ways away from him, and he's pointing to the perna, the ham. He says, how much is that ham? Ubi pretium auditor, lanio respondent, ego numquam dabo tantum pretium. Right. So Sudla says, how much is that him? Then you have when the price, the pretium auditor is heard. Right. Meaning when he heard the price is really the active um, voice version of this. But when the price is heard, he responds. Right. Lanio to the merch, uh, to the butcher, rather. So he responds to the butcher, dated. And he says, ego, I, numquam, never. Right. Never will I dabo give. It's the verb dodare, future tense because of the bow. So he says, I will never give tantum pretium such a price. Right. So he's kind of outraged. Like, how could you possibly say it's worth that much? Right. Prido quidem mihi videris non lanius. So he says, you seem to me, mihi videris. Videris means you seem. It's the same idea as we dator earlier. Right. So he says, you seem to me. Right. Um, the idea being you seem to me to be a prido quidam, um, a certain robber. Right. So he says you're, you're, you're a robber um, is how you appear to me, not a lanius, not a butcher. So he's like, you know, you're you don't you're not a, a, a butcher. You're a thief trying to give me that that price. Right. And he says, Nemo nisi scelestis tantum petit. Right. Nobody. Nemo. Unless, um, or except, you could say Nisi, except for a, a scholastus, a wicked man is the idea. Again, scholastus here is not modifying any noun. It's a substantive. It, you have to imply the word um, either kind of man, woman, thing, depending on the gender. Here, scholastus is masculine, so you can imply the word man. He says, nobody except a wicked man um, looks for, pet it, tantum, such a price, right? Tantum, the implied word is pretium, price. So he says, no one except a wicked person looks for such a price, right? You're, you're, you're making me pay such an outrageous price, is really what he's saying. And then he continues, he says, ad aliam tabernum, ibo neque umquam, and he gets cut off. So ibo, I will go, ad aliam tabernum, to another shop. Right. And he says, and not ever umquam. So and never, he's probably about to say, and never come back here when he gets interrupted. And you have procox as pseudole interpolat lanius. So the butcher, the lanius interpolat, he, he um, interrupts, right? Interpolat, he says, you know, enough of this, right? He interrupts him. And he says, procox says, you're insolent, right? You're pushy, pseudolus, right? He says, you're, you're being a bit much here is really what he's saying. And again, pseudole is vocative because he's talking to him. So he interrupts him. He's like, enough, you're, you're being pushy here is really what he's saying.
And the butcher continues and says, per yokum sine dubio hoc dicas. So uh, per yokum means as a joke, like through a joke or as a joke. Sine dubio, without a doubt. Sine always takes the ablative, which is why we have dubio here. So he says, without a doubt, right, as a joke, dicas, you are saying hoc, this, right? So he says, you, you must be saying this as a joke, is really what he's getting at. But literally, he says, you're saying this as a joke, without a doubt. So without a doubt, you're saying this as a joke, right? He can't believe that Sulis is getting all offended. <clears throat> and he says, in hoc via, nemo carna meliorum habet, ut bene skis. So he says, in this road or on this this road or this street, nobody, nemo, habet, has carna meliorum, better meat, right? Carna meliorum, melior means better. And again, the EM ending is because it's describing carna. So he says, nobody has better meat on this road, ut bene skis. Ut here means as, skis is you know, right? Skire to know, the S just means you know. So he says, as you know, bene, as you know well. Right. So he's saying, you already know this. You know, I have the best stuff. Right. Um, so he's like, you know, it must be a joke that you're insulting me um, because I have the best meat. So it costs the most is kind of what he's implying here. Hoc pretium non est magnum. And he says, hoc pretium, this price is not magnum, big, is not great. So it's not a not a big price. See autum multum emes pretium fortasse minuetur. So he says, if, however, you will buy emes, right, it's future tense, um, emere, third conjugation verb, the es here in the ending makes it future, right? He says, if you will buy multum a lot, right, a lot of stuff, the price, perhaps, the pretium for tasse, um, the price minuetur, it will be lessened right? Um, minuere to, to, to lessen or, or to bring down, right? Lower is kind of one way to say it. So he says, if you buy a lot of stuff, you know, maybe the price will be lowered. Um, and again, minuetur is passive because the price isn't lowering anything. It's being lowered, right? So minuetur is that future passive. Then he says, Dominus tuus ut audiwi, cross canam amici suis dabit. So your master, Dominus tuus, right? As I heard, ut audiwi, so he says, as I heard it, your master, cross tomorrow, dabit, will give, right? He will give a canam, dinner, amiki suis, to his friends. So he's saying, as I heard it, your master um, will give dinner to his friends tomorrow, right? He knows about the dinner party. How he knows this, you know, nobody can be sure, but apparently he knows about it. And he's about to leverage Pseudolus with that fact. He says, none porcum emes. So he says, surely you will buy porcum, a pig. Right. So you can interpret this as he's kind of playing pseudolus. Like, you know, I, I know your master's putting on a dinner party. Right. Surely you came to buy a pig. The implication here is you're not going to go back empty handed. Right. Like you're going to buy the pig. Um, so it's, it's this back and forth leverage between the butcher and pseudolus. Then you have cui pseudolus. Right. Um, so pseudolus says back cui to him. And he says, quem porcum mihi wendere wis. Um, and he says, do you want to sell, Wendere Wies, right? Do you want to sell to me um, which pig? So which pig do you want to sell to me is really what he's saying here. Um, quem porcum, right? And he says, ille est pinguis. That one, ille est pinguis, is fat, right? That's a fat one over there. And he says, da mihi illum, right? Da here is the imperative, give. So he says, give to me illum, that one, right? Give that one to me. And the butcher responds with, Ile porcus heri in meis agris pascebator, mea manu curebator. So again, here's the back and forth. He says, that pig, Ile porcus, right? Yesterday, pascebator, it was being fed, right? Um, in meis agris, in my fields. So he says, just yesterday, the pig was alive is kind of the idea, right? It was being fed. It was, you know, pastured in my field, uh, in my fields, rather. And he says, curebator, it was being cared for. Mea manu, by my own hand, right? Ablative. Again, uh, you know, it's the ablative of agent here. What or what was kind of taking care of it? So he says it was being taken care of um, or raised by my own hand. So his implication here is, you know, this is a fresh pig. I just raised it. It's worth a lot of money. And he says, nulum porcum meliorum in hoc urbe emes, right? Emes, you will buy nulum porcum meliorum, no better pig in Hakerbe, in this city. So he's bragging about how great his pig is because he raised it with his own hands and it was you know, fed in his own fields. He says, you're not going to find a better one. Senatore Romano, Ilum Wendere Wolo. Wendere Wolo, I want to sell. Um, Ilum, that, meaning that pig, Senatore Romano, to a Roman senator. So he says, I want to sell it to a Roman senator. Itaque tibi decem denaris eum wendam. He says, and so, wendam, I will sell, future tense, I will sell it, eum, 
Tibby to you for 10 denarii, where this is the ablet of a price. He says, I'll sell it to you for 10 denarii, right? 10 silver coins. So now he's starting the negotiation to actually sell the pig. So the butchers made his <clears throat> sort of appeal, his offer to Sudalus saying, you know, 10 denarii, right? And Sudalus responds and says, decan denaris, emo quinque. So 10 denarii, right? He says, uh, you know, how about five, right? Emo quinque, five. Then the butcher responds with octo, eight. And Pseudolus responds with octo, si ille lepis quoque aditus eret gratis. So now they're going back and forth. They go from 10 to 5 to 8. They're kind of meeting in the middle. And Pseudolus says, 8, if ille lepis, that rabbit, also aditus eret, will be added gratis for free, right? So aditus eret is the future tense, right? Future passive. So he says, if that will be added for free, I'll give you eight denarii, right? Eight silver coins. And he says, si non, right? Here's his sort of um, last negotiating chip. He says, si non, nihil emam et ad aliam tabernam ibo. So he says, if not, I will, um, I'll buy nothing, right? Emam, I will buy. The am ending here is future tense, right? It's a third conjugation verb. He says, I will buy nothing. And ibo, I will go ad aliam tabernam to another shop, right? Which is his threat he was making before. He says, I actually will do that if you don't sell it to me. So the butcher responds, says, non sine causa tu vocara sudalis. So he says, it's not without cause, non sine causa, that you, right, tu vocaris, you are called, not you call, but again, passive, you are called sudalis, right? The joke here, we'll talk about at the end, the joke is sudalis is a name that really means liar, right? Um, so he's kind of like a cheater, a liar. So he says, of course, you're called sudalis, right? You're, you're a thief, is kind of the idea. And he says, wo serwi non, non nos lanii recte praedones wo kamini. So he says, you slaves, wo serwi, all of you slaves, not us butchers, right? Nos lanii. He says, not us butchers, rightly, recte, are called wo kamini praedones, robbers, Right, Wokamini is that second person plural ending because he's referring to wo serwi. So he says, you all are, are, should be called robbers, right? Rightly, recte. He says, not us. We're not the robbers. You are. Look what you're doing here. You're, you're basically stealing from me with this price. This is common. Then you have multimet diu clamat lanius, said Sudalis nihil responded. So the lanius, the butcher shouts many things, multum, um, and for a long time. So he keeps yelling at him like, rah, rah, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, right? So he's yelling many things, but Sudalis nihil responded. Sudalis doesn't respond, <clears throat> right? He responds nothing or says nothing. He just stands there. Tandem, finally, right? Tandem lanius octo denarius in vitus akipit. So finally, the butcher, Akipit, he accepts. Inuitus means unwillingly, right? Because he didn't want to do this. He unwillingly accepts eight denarii, right? So he takes the price, right, of that eight denarii. Then you have porcum et leporem pseudolo trade. So trade, it's still, the subject is still lanius. He hands over, trade, the pig, the porcum, and the rabbit, the leporum, pseudolo, two pseudolus, right? He hands it over to him or gives it to him. Yam Sudalis Noster. And remember, the, the person telling the story is Cyrus. So you have to remember that's why he's saying Noster, because it's it's really um, the story's taking place in the Cornelius' house, and Cyrus is telling Marcus and Sextus about what he heard. <clears throat> so he says, Yam Sudalis Noster read it at Totum Fabulum Nobis Narawit. So now our Sudalis, right? Because again, Cyrus is referring to his friend Sudalis here. He says he returned, ready, right? Perfect tense. He returned and Narawit, he told totum fabulum, the whole story, nobis, to us, right? He told us the whole story. That's how Cyrus knows this. In animo habet leperum amico vendere et pecuniam sibi retinere. So here's the trick. It says he has in mind, in animo habet, meaning Sudalus has in mind, to sell vendere, right? What does he have in mind to do? Vendere, to sell the leperum, the rabbit, amico, to a friend. And retinere, meaning he has in mind to keep, retinere, to retain or keep the pecunium, the money, sibi, for himself. So this was Pseudolus's plan. He wants to take that rabbit that he just negotiated and he's going to sell it and keep the money himself. That was his trick. Then we have minime vero clamavit Aurelia, quae aforo rediera et omnia audivera. So absolutely not, right? Truly no, surely not, or absolutely not, you could say, shouted Aurelia, right? So Aurelia's on the mom. And it's Aurelia, quai, who had returned, pluperfect tense, ready era, a foro, who had returned from the forum and had heard, audi vera, omnia, right? She'd already heard, heard all this stuff. So Aurelia's mad. She's like, absolutely not. Sare, da mi uh, leperem. So she says, Cyrus, give to me the rabbit. Pseudolus ad vilam rusticam mitator. So Pseudolus will be sent, mitator, future tense, he will be sent to the country house. Vos quoque puniemini 
omnes, you all, wos omnes, will be punished too. So she says, we're going to send him to the country house and we're going to punish you because you were part of it. So that's the end of the story. But if you're wondering um, about this punishment at the end, being in the Wheeler Rustica means you're out in the country, right? Which means you'd probably be doing manual labor. <clears throat> so in the city, pseudolists could be doing other things, like for instance, you know, running to the butcher to get, you know, get the meat, um, the pig. If you go out to the Wheeler Rustica, the reason that's a punishment is because you're away from the city and you're probably going to be working outside on the farm. So you're going from a job where there probably is manual labor, but not that type of manual labor, to a job on a farm where it's you're going to be working and, and probably doing a lot more work. So this is why it's a punishment right? She's not going to do that to the other slaves, but, you know, who knows what punishment she's going to give them. It could be, you know, we, we've seen before in the, the treatment of slaves, it could be beating, anything like that, pretty horrible punishments, but she's blaming them because they were part of it, even though they didn't really do anything, they knew about it is the idea. So the reason the story all comes together, um, you know, I mentioned this earlier, is because of the name pseudolus, right? So pseudolus means liar, right? It's a, from a Greek word, basically means liar. And it's a reference to a play, right? There was a Roman playwright named Plautus who has a play named pseudolus. And it kind of mimics this idea of, of the slave who's, who's a liar or cheat in one way or another. So that's the joke that's happening here um, through the story. The, name, uh, the reason his name is pseudolus is because he's kind of a cheat. He's trying to, you know, uh, swindle a little bit the uh, the butcher to get extra money that he plans to keep and not give back to his master. That's the whole idea of pseudolus. And there's a reference in there, like I mentioned before, where the, the butcher says to him, you know, it's it's correct, it's right that they call you pseudolus, right? That's a good name for you because you're you're a cheat. So either way, this story not too too bad. Um, again, the grammar you want to work your way through it. It showed up a couple times um, in this story, but again, you want to get more exposure and read as much as you possibly can, particularly with the demonstratives, just. To be able to, to figure it out. But the more you read, the better off you're going to be, I always tell you. Um, and it's true. So don't get too bogged down in, in the grammar of this translation. I mean, it will help. But the more you read it and practice it and say it, you're, you're going to understand this a lot easier um, just through practice. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the chat and let me know. I'll help you um, however I can. But otherwise, just keep practicing, keep reading as much as you can. And hopefully every time we do one of these videos, every chapter, you're feeling more and more confident in your life.